This is the all-in-one 10 gigabit Wi-Fi 7 router and unified console, the UDR7 from Ubiquiti. And it can run all the unified applications. But what's actually going to happen if you try to do that? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Bogdan Schperny, founder of Apex One IT, and we do small business IT. Now, I've been using this router as my main unified console for several weeks now to see how it actually performs in a real world scenario. I'll show you what I learned so that you know what to expect out of this machine if you buy this for your own home or a small business deployment. But first, let's take a quick look at its features. First thing you'll notice is that nice matte white finish that Unify always has. So it'll look nice on your desk, cabinet. The power supply is integrated, which is why you, know, you don't have a brick here. It's just a nice clean cable. And I actually had this sitting on my shelf there before with the cable and just an ethernet cable as well. So it's pretty clean. It's only 7.3 inches tall and 4.3 inches in diameter. And without the PoE port on here, it consumes 26 watts of power, which is not a lot at all. The new Express 7 is at 22 watts. And now it's loading and it's showing you that on this one inch display. In terms of networking, we have 2.5 gig LAN ports here, and actually all of them are reassignable to WAN or LAN, but in any case, we have one PoE port that's just PoE. The rest and all of them are 2.5 here, except the last one is a SFP plus 10 gig port. By default, this SFP plus 10 gig and this RJ45 ethernet ports can be used for your WAN connection. So for at least initially when you set this up, you want to connect there. And if you do have internet connection above 2.5 gigs, comment down below, you are very lucky. You might not have a DAC cable SFP plus adapter on it, so you might need to pick up something like this from Unified. There's that part number, and I'll have a link for you. But you can use this, and this is an adapter for your RJ45 ports. So let's say that this is your internet coming in, right? You can just plug that in, and the other side goes to your modem, of course, or ONT. But in my example, what I actually did is I reassigned these ports. So I have my primary ISP coming into port four because I have a one gig connection up and down. And I also have a secondary backup internet that I have in port three here. And to reassign them quite simply, when you have this already up and running, just go to settings, internet here, and you can click on any of these ports. So your primary one by default would have been this port five SFP plus, and I just reassigned it to port four, and then my secondary one, RUN two, is port three. I have it as failover. Of course, you can do load balancing as well. Now, what that means is that this 10 gig SFP plus port that I have can be used with a, another switch that has a SFP plus connection. So if I have some need for local network faster throughput there, like I have a NAS, something like that, right? I can pick up a DAC like this, drop it in here, and the other end goes to my switch. So it can be a whole rack mount switch, or it can be something like that new utility switch, the Flex 2.5, uh, 8 or 8 PoE. So that's a good use case for that. And this still leaves me the PoE port and another RJ45 2.5 gig port. The UDR can support up to 30 unified devices. So in my testing, the way I used it, well, it shows a lot more than I'm actually using right now. Let's look here at the topo. In reality, I, was, I had like six total unified devices connected. Also had the phone on here, but just disconnected right now. In terms of wireless connectivity, this is Wi-Fi 7, of course, tri-band, six stream, which means it's two by two multi-user MIMO or MIMO on each of those radios, right? So your 2.4, five gigahertz and six gigahertz. And technically, on your six gigahertz, your throughput is something like 5.7 gigahertz. And I'll have the chart up for the other ones as well. It does also support MLO or multi-link operation, meaning that for devices that support it, it can potentially use more than one radio. So for example, not just the five gigahertz, but five and six or the 2.4 gigahertz as well. You can have four SSIDs per radio, meaning that 2.4, five or six gigahertz. 
And what that looks like, something like this, typically will be basically, you know, like four Wi-Fi names. Uh, I have one disabled, but that's essentially what I had running here. And so with all that, with the ports and your wireless devices, it can have at the same time around 300 devices working. Now, I don't have that many, uh, but I have quite a few. So I have something like 30, 35 plus of my devices on here are all IoT, like smart home related, and even more ones that are not connected to Wi-Fi, but to a hub. So there's a lot of signals going on here and I have something, yeah, like three wire connections at the moment, uh, but really there's actually more that's just not on this network. And here this shows that I have typically, you know, 46 connections. This is just over the last day, but sometimes when more people come over, everybody's at the house, you know, it goes 50 plus easy. I'm just giving you the background of what my scenario is here where I'm testing this UDR7. Ubiquity says that this can cover up to 1750 square feet. Now my house is 1500 square feet, not counting the garage, and this did quite fine. It is an improvement over the previous UDR that did roughly 1500 square feet. Now having said that, I actually, since I had it, I have the UX7 and you see it's wirelessly meshing to the UDR7. So because of, you know, six gigahertz doesn't go as far, that's something you want to consider. You might need another AP if you want more of those Wi-Fi 7 on the six gigahertz connections. Like I mentioned, it can run all the applications. In terms of Unify Protect, most likely what you'll be running here or Unify Talk. For Protect, you're limited to five HD cameras. Okay, so that's something like their instant cameras that they have where it's Wi-Fi based, it just needs power. So if you're running like five of those, that's great for that or two 2K cameras. So that's like your turret ultras uh, in that category. A lot of their, even the G5 PTZ is a 2K camera. Although you can't run it off of this without more power because this is only, this port on here is only PoE. And then you can run one 4K camera. So like their AI cameras, a G5 Pro, the 4K cameras, only one of those. So keep that in mind. In here is included a 64 gigabyte micro SD card and don't lose this in the box, but in the packaging, there is this tool to help you remove this SD slot. It's a Western digital 64 gigabyte card right there. So that, that's a good card for NVR usage. Now with this included card though, uh, it is nicer than with the original because the original did not have anything included, but with the 64 gigabyte included one, you can only record motion events. So you cannot set it to record continuous. And for me with two 2K cameras, I tested it with also five HD cameras. Well, really there were various cameras, but I downgraded them to HD. It was, you know, estimating it's all based on motion. For me, it was estimating like three days on the 64 gigabyte card. But again, it'll vary a lot depending on how many motion events it has, right? What I did later is I swapped that out for a 128 gigabyte micro SD. And with two 2K cameras, it was estimated about three days of continuous recording. So I can now enable continuous with that 128 gigabyte. You can also put like a 256. And in fact, Unify now sells their own micro SD card. I'll have a link for you, but if you need to pick one up, you can do so from them as well. So now what happened when I ran all the applications, right? I ran Protect uh, and like I showed, I just wanted to show you here that I had also different, you know, I had the intrusion prevention turned on here. I have like 10 VLANs going on. You know, I'm actually using the network, uploading a bunch of documents, uh, videos, 4K footage, right? And in fact, if we go right now to the dashboard, and if I click here on the UDR, go to insights, let's go look at stats. Man, that five gig channel. So for example, what I just did here a couple hours ago is I turned back on uh, nearly all the applications, not quite. And this is what I'm looking at, right? I'm looking at CPU and memory usage. So over the course of weeks, I took some screenshots because I ran it in different scenarios. And let me show you what I got. So here on the left, this is the UDR7, and I'm just kind of denoting that, you know, I had intrusion prevention turned on, a bunch of VLANs. This is with the network application only running. So with the network, and uh, this before doesn't matter, I was probably testing something else. It's right here that I, the, what the screenshot is about. So CPU roughly at 20% is what I had and memory, you know, hovering just above 60%. So that was very consistent in terms of memory. 
you know, the only thing is that CPU varied here based on usage, you know, usage of the actual network. And for a comparison with the, I just took this screenshot actually from another site that has a UDR running. And there it has no VLANs, it's just, it's home usage. They only have one network. Intrusion prevention is turned on with all the detections, you know, something like 13, 11. And it's also only running the network application. So what's interesting with that is, you know, the memory there for whatever reason is, you know, bouncing around from like 75 to 85% quite a bit higher than the UDR7. And the CPU here, you know, roughly, you know, I put it at 17%. When, when I actually tried to log on to it, you see it, it bumped up like crazy, like 40, 40, 50%. Point is, is that with just the network application running and even with a bunch of its features enabled, you're really using it. This is something where you can expect this, this kind of performance. Now, when I had all the applications running, you know, all the VLANs, I have like 10 VLANs and intrusion prevention and a bunch of firewall rules there. I had five HD cameras continuously recording. That's actually what I had going on for a couple weeks like that. Before I show you those results and to see more videos like this, please subscribe, hit the like button, and now let's check it out. So you'll see the CPU definitely varies a lot, but I was roughly, you know, let's say on average, something like 50, 55%. Okay, so this is this is what it looked like. And the memory now would almost always be at least 80% up to 85%. Never really saw it go past that. Although what actually happened here, and that's right where my mouse is, <laughs> where the CPU peaked, you know, I don't know, that was like 90%. It actually crashed, essentially froze up, and I could tell because I couldn't access the display on here was frozen as well. But yeah, I actually got it to crash. Uh, granted, you know, I would say that I was not just using the network and using the, you know, protect or anything like that. I was, um, you know, messing around in the unified dashboard a bunch. So most likely that's what led to it. So again, you know, I was running it for weeks like that and I did make it freeze up once. I, d I don't imagine that will happen to you every time, but just wanted to point out that in general, right, Ubiquity allows you to run all the applications on this UDR7, as opposed to the previous UDR, which I believe just gave you three. They had that two, they bumped it up to three. So they're, they're really trying to prevent you from crashing it. And the point with this one is really that you're not trying to run every single application of it on it to the max. Of course, it'll also depend how much you're like pushing the network application, things like that. But a, you know, a better deployment, and I, have a, I had a 10 gig switch running off of this as well. But a much better deployment of this, you know, what this is really made for is something like this show here, right? You have the UDR7, you have another utility switch, and even if you have a NAS connected to it, you need like 10 gigabit, you can use that SFP port for LAN, which is great, right? You have, these are like 2K camera here, you maybe have a, another 2K camera, two 2K cameras, additional access points, and that still leaves you with a bunch of ports that you can connect computers to if you have computers physically that don't move but also with Wi-Fi 7, much better wireless connectivity to all your Wi-Fi devices. And this deployment will be best in maybe like a small coffee shop, small business office, something literally that's, you know, kind of centered around a lobby, 1750 square foot, obviously more if you, you know, you can add more APs and you can have two cameras, maybe at the lobby, another one pointing at the front door from inside most likely. But really the best and kind of very easy to recommend and for other customers, friends who ask me is this UDR7 for residential, especially if you're in a dense residential area where you're close to other people and you know, there's a bunch of Wi-Fi traffic already. Channels are being utilized a lot, right? This is like your, your highway and there's a lot of cars in there. What the UDR7 of course gives you is more of those channels, right? So if we go, here into the dashboard, I'm looking at Wi-Fi, for example. There are just so many that this can choose from where it can operate, and I'm in the US here. And this is actually using Unify's new kind of easy configurator for Wi-Fi, right? I have it at conservative. I tried maximum speed, different ways, but you can easily set this up. And in a dense environments, it can find the optimal channels for you to use. Especially if your home is based on Wi-Fi devices, meaning you're not really going to use most of these Ethernet ports then this is a good option. And if you, you know, care about the aesthetic, you don't have a place to put a network rack, uh, you have a central location, you could put this on your TV console, 
shelf, desk, literally, and it's central in your house as well. That will help if you have a bigger home, then you might be able to cover this with just one access point, literally just one device, the all-in-one, you know, dream router. And in that situation, you're really not compromising because this is as future-proof as it gets right now. So Wi-Fi 7, just to give you some background, like the iPhone, I think just, just the previous iPhone 16 is the only one that supports iPhone 7. The one before that um, did have six gigahertz, Wi-Fi 6E. Uh, but again, that just shows you that the point is that there's a lot of devices even now that can't utilize this to the max. But you know, if you're buying this now, you're set for quite some time, okay? It's gonna be a while until your laptop, your smartphone, all those kind of devices can really utilize this to the max. With a update just recently, they now enabled MLO. So I think I mentioned this in, in the beginning, but this is what lets you utilize like the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz or 6 gigahertz at the same time. Again, it's limited and there's some warning for IoT devices for sure, but it's limited, you know, your, your actual device needs to support that as well, like your laptop, your smartphone. So once they do, and again, this is another point of why this is so future-proof because as devices come out with that, you won't have to update your router, your gateway. This guy, the EDR7 can handle it. Having said all that, the Dream Router is still not for everyone. If you, for example, want to deploy this in a branch, like your, you have your headquarters, you have a smaller branch, but you use something like Unify Identity Enterprise specifically, because there's some cool benefits with that. But if you use that, you can't run this you can't run it off of this console. You need something like the uh, Dream Wall, for example, which I think, yeah, right here. So the Dream Wall, that's $1,000. Uh, it's a much bigger, more powerful machine, but it's also an all-in-one, and, and that would be a better option for that. Also, the UDR7 is not for you. If you know going into this that you for sure going to go deep into Unify Protect, the camera security system, yet you still want a compact, unified console you know this kind of nice matte white look that you can set on your desk on your tv console then you actually want to click on this top video but if you find yourself in the opposite camp and you don't want to use unify protect at all you just want unify networking and you want to save 80 dollars, then just go with the unify express and you can watch that video down below thanks for watching take care